What's up guys, I'm back with another tutorial. So somebody on Instagram sent me a DM and it had a beautiful picture in it and she said, can you please recreate this look for Valentine's Day? The picture ended up um, belonging to Makeup Amor. She is beautiful, she does the most gorgeous looks. And I was like, wow, this is a really pretty makeup look. So this look is inspired by her. I basically recreated it in my way because you guys know, no matter what look I'm doing, somehow it just always ends up being on the, you know, on the lighter side, on the more minimal side. So this is basically the look using the least amount of product, the least, you know, um, least glam, I guess. I know my first two videos back have included a lot of high-end products. So the next tutorial I do, I promise I will include affordable products. So this look is really, I mean, it was requested for Valentine's Day. It could definitely be worn for Valentine's Day. Really, it could be worn for any like special night out, special occasion. I just really like it. I love a good bronzy, smoky eye. So keep watching and I will show you how I did it. So again, since this is a very shadow heavy look, I'm gonna start with the eyes, wipe, and then move on to the face. So I got something done recently to my eyebrows that is probably my favorite thing I've ever gotten done. It's called a brow lamination. So basically, it's almost like a brow perm so that Look, the way I just brush my brows and it just stays like that. It looks like way fuller and fluffier. I could never get this with brow gel. It's actually the most amazing thing. So I'm not adding anything to my brows today. All I have to do is just brush them up and it's just gonna stay like that. It's called a brow lamination or brow lift. I don't like to call it a brow lift because it sounds surgical, but um, like I said, it's kind of like just a, a brow perm so that it flattens out and it just makes them look way fuller. All right, now moving on to actual shadow work. The palette that I'm gonna use today is by Persona Cosmetics. It is their Identity 2 palette. The reason I like this palette is because it has a good range of like bronzy tones but it also has a really nice velvety matte, just very black black. But before I actually put on the shadow, I'm forgetting a primer. To prime my lids, I'm just gonna use a concealer. So this is a concealer I'm gonna use on my face too. It's the Dose of Colors Meet Your Hue Concealer. This is really just gonna make all the colors stand out that much more. Just starting out with a light matte powdery um, base. I like to use concealer because one, it's a very old technique that has been around forever because it works and then you don't have to um, buy an actual primer product. But if you compare how shadow looks on the lid by itself versus with this on, the color is just going to show up so much more. If you're doing something minimal and super light, I don't recommend it, but for a look like this, I recommend it. Let's see how many minutes I can get through before my back starts to kill me. Grabbing a blending brush, I'm going to start, last time I did this, I started with Loyal, but I think I'm gonna start with Kind. So it's like the lightest matte shade in here. I'm just gonna work this at the very outer part of my, where that shadow would end, blending it with the crease a little bit, just to make sure everything blends really nicely. So then the next color I'm gonna go in with is right next to it, it's called Loyal. This of course is the transition color. So this is just gonna go right into my crease. I hate that you guys have to see this part over and over again for every tutorial, because the first two steps are almost always the same, but they are important. So just working that into the crease, inner corner to outer corner, all the way across. Okay, so the next color I'm gonna go in with is called Passionate. It's this kind of brick shade here. You definitely want a lot of warmth in this look. And with this, I'm gonna focus on kind of this outer part of the crease and work it into, sorry, outer part of my lid and work it into the crease. Just blend, blend, blend. So 
So just small circular motions, starting at the outer part of the lid and slowly working my way into the, the crease. So I'm gonna continue with Passionate into this inner part of the crease. And don't worry about what lands on your lids right now because it's gonna be covered by so much shimmer that nothing's gonna show under, so don't worry about that. So now just with the same brush, I'm going to dip into Brave, which is a matte dark brown shade. And with this, we're just gonna deepen this smoky effect. Starting again right here at the outer part of the lid. And obviously using less of it than the last color. This one's gonna stay under the crease, not necessarily in the crease. I feel like the smoky eye is just as much placement as it is blending. Placement's really important too. So we're just gonna put some in the inner part of the crease. Or the lid actually. Probably should have used a smaller brush for this. Mm, yeah, we'll do a smaller one. So use something a little bit more pointed, more concentrated at the tip, just so you can get in here and not get super messy about that dark shade going everywhere. So again, right here at the outer part of the lid, working our way in. And then also adding it to the inner part, inner corner of the lid and just blending it in with the crease. Don't really add it to the crease, just blend it with the crease. So as you make progress, just be sure you stop and look at both sides. Make sure they're fairly even. Okay, I think we're ready to move on to a little bit of shimmer. I'm gonna add some black after but I do wanna get some shimmer in there first. So, let's see which brush we should use. I kinda of feel like I should just use this brush. This is probably my favorite eyeshadow brush. It's by Smith Cosmetics. It's the number 235. I have more than one. I don't know why I don't bring it up here. Actually, I changed my mind. I'm gonna do this with my finger. I'm gonna take Resilient with my finger, just because sh shimmer shadows always show up that much better when it's skin applying it. So with this, I'm gonna start at the edge of that dark brown and just start working my way in. And then do the same thing at the other edge. And just fill in that space that didn't have any shadow on the lid. It's a really gorgeous color, Resilient. It's probably my favorite color in this palette. So again, grabbing more of Resilient with my finger. Starting at the edge of the dark brown and just covering that inner area of the lid. And then don't be afraid to add a little bit right here to the center part of the crease. Just gonna give it a little more dimension. So I'm gonna take a, yes, a smudge brush. Yes, no, no, I'm gonna take this brush here. It's the Monica brush by Hank and Henry. I like this, it's, I don't, I've never really seen a brush like this. It's like a, a blending brush, but really tiny. So this is just gonna give me a less opaque application than the pointed tip of the smudge brush, which is gonna be way more concentrated. So let's start with this first. So close to the lash line at the outer corner, just begin blending that black in. Ooh, looks good. Yeah, so with black, just always be a little bit more conservative because it could really ruin everything else you've done because it's such a, obviously a powerful color. It could over, overpower everything else you've done. So just start 
really conservatively. So little by little, I'm just adding and then very lightly moseying on over <laughs> across the crease. I think that's as far as I wanna go with that side. Let's do the same over here, starting close to the lash line. Being careful not to cover that beautiful bronze. And always tap your brush before you go in to apply because otherwise it's just gonna deposit way too much product. I would like to add a little bit more of that red. So I'm gonna take Passionate. It's not really a red, it's like a brick brown. But it's really gonna add that red tone to this look, so just adding a little more. Next, for the exciting sparkly part, I'm gonna take the um, Diamond Light Finisher by Artist Couture. And the color is called Diamond Bronze. If you guys have used these, you know they're a very high impact product. And with this, I'm using my ring finger to grab a little bit of it. And you can see how that looks. It's extremely sparkly. I'm gonna start right at the center of my lid and just press that in and just distribute it in like the most even way I can. So I'm using most of it right at the center and then just kind of dispersing the rest so it kind of blends out toward the edges. I'm gonna take a little bit more of Resilient with the same finger and just work on that edge there just to blend them together because these two colors are really pretty together and then with this just gonna again starting in the center press that in all the way up to the crease and then just with whatever's left on your finger start blending it out be really careful about where this lands because once it's on it's on it's not coming off and then again taking a little bit more of resilient Filling in any blank spots and blending. All right, so the really difficult part is over. I'm gonna grab one of my Neutrogena makeup wipes. I'm just gonna get everything off my face. So to start on the skin, I'm gonna use one of the new Laura Mercier primers. This is the Pure Canvas Primer, the hydrating one. Take that and just apply all over. What I love about this is a lot of times primers can feel heavy and like um, just like a layer sitting on your skin. This just feels like a nice lotion. I look so crazy with a full smoky eye and no face makeup. So let's add the foundation. I'm using one of my tried and true favorites, the Luminous Silk by um, Armani. And this is the 6.5 and Gonna use the Smashbox brush to apply. And of course the concealer, Dose of Colors. The color that I'm using is 16. And I'm gonna be pretty generous with this since we are heavy on the eyes. And then with this Hank and Henry brush, I'm going to just buff that in and kind of really focus on that inner part right here because, you know, I did put dark shadow there. So I don't want to look like a raccoon and have like super dark inner corners of the eyes. So just try to blend that out. Okay, so for contour, I'm mainly going to use a powder contour, but uh, to begin, I'm going to use the Chanel, what is this called? Soleil Tan de Chanel. It's just going to add a little warmth. I'm not doing like a full, full contour like that, but a lot of people ask me about this product. Obviously, it's expensive, so you have to be like really sure about it if you're going to get it. 
um, if you're any more tan than me, if your complexion is any deeper than mine, I wouldn't recommend getting it. Oops. Because um, you're just, it's not going to make any difference. It's not dark enough. So unless you're my shade or more fair, don't get it. <laughs> Sometimes it hardly makes a difference, even on me, if I'm more tan. But I like it because sometimes it gives me just like a subtle contour, as opposed to like full intense contour. So actually, before I move on, I want to... That's what that was. There was like a brush hair on my face and I couldn't figure it out. It was bugging me. So, powder. Let's talk about powder. In my last video, I applied powder with a sponge for the, probably the first time you've ever seen me do that. I always, always see people on Instagram like adding powder with a sponge. And I thought that was so crazy. Like, whoa, why not a brush? Why are you using a sponge? Until I tried it. So the sponge gives you like a really flawless but heavy finish. That's the whole thing is the sponge really packs in the uh, powder But it looks really nice if you have a heavy look on if you don't definitely don't do it But I've kind of been enjoying doing this lately. So I'm just gonna put some in the cap and Then grab a little with sponge get in there and then Just set Just set the concealer No baking for me just setting but like I said, using the sponge, it really packs in the, um, the powder. It's funny, I'm obviously I'm not a professional makeup artist, but I mean, I've been doing makeup on YouTube for a minute. But, you know, you learn something every day. You have to be open to learning things. And it's kind of nice. You get bored of doing the same old technique all the time. So I'm going to add a little powder bronzer as well. But first, I want to do some blush. I'm gonna use the Cheek to Chic blush by Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Pillow Talk shade. So pretty. I've always loved the Cheek to Chic. They're some of my favorite blushes. And this color is so gorgeous. And then with this, just the same brush, I'm taking the BH Cosmetics, um, what is this called? The Brilliance Bronzer. This is a great bronzer. I've been using it for a long time. And I'm just gonna intensify that contour just a little bit. And then finally for the face, where is it? I'm gonna take uh, the Cali Glow Highlighter by Persona Cosmetics in Del Mar. And I'm just gonna really soak that brush and give it a tap. And this is just gonna go all over my face. This is like my finishing touch. And it's gonna give me an all over bronze. I'm not doing any highlight because this is gonna actually give me a highlight, but it is just the perfect finishing product for the face. Almost finishing product. I am gonna spray this so it doesn't budge. This is a Smashbox setting spray. We're gonna take that like pointed brush again and dip into Loyal. And with this, we're just gonna run that across the bottom lash line. So this will be our transition shade to build over. And then let's take that smudge brush. And actually let's take, let's take Brave. I don't wanna go too dark. And let's just add that to the inner part and then blend it out toward the outer part. Make sure I stay as close to the lash line as possible. And then with the same brush, I'm just gonna add a little bit of Resilient. Just to the inner part of the uh, of the lash line, and that's as much as I want to do on the bottom lash line. 
I am gonna run a black liner all the way across, up, upper and lower. So let's get real wide-eyed for this. <laughs> Always looks so scary doing this. Get that in the bottom lash line as well. Now moving on to mascara. I'm gonna use the full seal mascara again. No falsies for this look. With a shadow heavy look like this, I don't like to use false lashes because it tends to hide all that beautiful work you've done on your lids. And then just once more, I'm gonna go through and brush my brows again because I flattened them out from uh, the face routine. I'm just gonna brush them and set them where they're supposed to be. No brow gel, nothing. Actually, brow gel, before I got the brow lamination, could never do this to my brows. Could never get them this like flat and fluffy. And finally for the lips, I'm gonna start out with the Iconic Nude Lip Cheat from Charlotte Tilbury. We want a good nude for this look. And then for the lipstick, I'm using this sleek product from Hourglass. The color is called I'll Never Stop. It's a really skinny, like slim lipstick. I'm just gonna blend that in with the liner. So that's it for this look. It's pretty smoky, it's pretty intense. Like I said, it's good for Valentine's Day, it's good for date night, any night out really. I just really like this like brown nude lip paired with eyes. Anyway, I hope you guys like this look as much as I did um, in my next video. You guys get to drag me, so follow me on Instagram to find out what I mean by that. I'll see you guys next time.